Uh, welcome to video 4.6, uh, Congruent Triangles Part 1. Before I go on to speaking specifically about congruent triangles, I want to spend a little bit of time, for this video anyway, talking about uh, what congruence means, okay? Because that's a term that you might have heard last year, it might be completely new to you, okay? So to explain congruence, I want you to first picture two A4 sheets of paper, okay? Even if you need to, put two A4 sheets of paper or anything, any exactly the same sheets of paper in front of you. And if I grab this sheet here, sheet number one, and here's sheet number two, I'll grab sheet number one and I picked it up and I put it on top of sheet number two, okay? So that it would look, you know, sheet number one is right over the top of sheet number two. We could say that these two sheets of paper are congruent, okay? Now, it's a weird word, maybe you've heard it before, but what it means is, so these two sheets are congruent, two objects or shapes are congruent if we can move them in such a way that they have the same size and shape, okay? So let's just say, for instance, a couple of quick examples. Uh, here's a diamond and here's a diamond. Now, it's not perfect, but you can kind of see these are nearly the same shape. I could set, I could create some geometric stuff inside here and say, yeah, these are congruent because the same shape, uh, same size. All right. Uh, I can do similar things with, say, this rectangle and maybe this rectangle because you could say, ah, oh, I see. He's picked it up and, you know, you can kind of rotate it that way a bit and you'd be able to get it looking exactly like this. That's what congruence is about. You need to be able, so if you could rotate one to make it look like the other or uh, some of the other transformations we're gonna see, then there's no issues, okay? But there are some rules to it and we're gonna cover them today or in this video. Okay, so how can we move them? The first way that we can move them is through reflection. Okay, so this is exactly what it sounds like. You reflect the shape. So if this is my sort of shape one, okay, and here's my shape two, I've reflected it across the mirror line, which for my intents and purposes here is the y-axis, okay? So the important thing to remember is that the size is unchanged, okay? Even though it's been flipped around, flipped over, it's uh, still exactly the same size. Okay, now these little tick mark things here, right, C in this reflection, the letter C, this point here, or this vertex here, has been reflected to this uh, point, this vertex here, okay? So C becomes point C prime, which is what that means, okay? So you'd say this C prime. Okay, that's what that little mark means up here, C prime, okay? Uh, same as B prime, A prime, E prime, and D prime. Now, the other sort of rule, so to speak, is re with reflection, is that from the mirror line, the original point, so let's take D and D prime here, it's, this is exactly the same distance here that it's been reflected across, okay? Points are exactly the same distance across, perpendicular to their original point, from this mirror line, okay? There's that's a lot of technical terms there, I know, but uh, this, remember, geometry is more about, you should probably understand this anyway, but we kind of need to give some lingo to things so that we can more easily communicate with each other, okay? So that's reflection. You can reflect objects or shapes and they are still congruent, okay? Right, translation. So this is another one. This is where you actually move the shape. Okay, so we can translate this triangle here by a vector, 3, negative 1. Now, this, as you should remember, is an ordered pair. Okay, so this corresponds to an x coordinate and this corresponds to a y coordinate. Okay, so that means that we are being moved positive 3 in the x direction negative one in the y direction. So let's take B. B is going to come across one, two, three in the x, positive x direction. And it's going to go negative one, so down one in the y direction. Okay, so our movement vector is going to end up being this arrow here. Okay, 
So a whole shape is going to move that way. All right, so B goes to here and becomes B prime. A comes across this way and becomes A prime. C goes down this way and becomes C prime. And so we end up drawing our new shape having been translated by 3, negative 1, okay? So if you translate a shape and don't do anything else to it, it is a congru they are congruent shapes. They are exactly the same as each other. Obviously, my drawing is a little bit crude, but, uh, you know, hopefully you can sort of see what's happening here. All right, it'd be the same as if you've got your A4 sheet of paper and just slid it across the desk, okay? You haven't changed the shape and size of the paper. You've just translated across the desk, okay? Rotation is one that we can do as well. So uh, this first shape here and this second one here has been rotated 90 degrees about the origin. So you're usually given some central point. So the origin is what I've chosen here. It's been rotated 90 degrees. So let's uh, pick a point here, make it A. And this piece is A prime. So I've rotated this 90 degrees, okay? Same as everything else. This has been rotated around 90 degrees, okay? Uh, so this is something that you're allowed to do to a shape and it still remains congruent, okay? It had the size and the shape of it hasn't been changed. It's just been rotated. Okay, that might sound obvious, but we need to create these things so that we can uh, really make watertight proofs and make watertight claims about particular geometrical things. Right, some key ideas for you. Uh, the word figure, because you'll see that sort of popping up in some of our questions, the word figure means the same thing as shape, diagram, or illustration. So if you see the word figure, it means shape, diagram, or illustration. Okay, so congruent figures are the same size and shape, all right? That's very important. This is the thing that you need to take away from this, that they're the same size and shape, okay? So if we reflect translate or rotate, which are the three transformations that I just showed you, a figure, it will be congruent to the original. So if we do one of these two things, one reflect, two translate, or three rotate it, it will be congruent still to its original, okay? And corresponding parts of a figure are geometrically equivalent. I'll, we'll, we'll see that in the example in a moment. And um, let's sort of scroll down here. Okay, so for example, uh, this triangle and this triangle here are congruent, okay, R despite what my bad drawing looks like. Right, so if we look at it, we can say things like this triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF, okay, and we write this by triangle ABC and this new equals sign thing here is congruent or equivalent to triangle DEF. So that's what that thing means. This means equivalent to. Okay, so the triangle ABC is equivalent to uh, triangle DEF. Uh, or we can use this one here. The, the squiggly line at the very top. So squiggly line, line, line. This means um, approximately equivalent to. Okay, all right. So you don't need to perfectly remember what those definitions are, but you need to be familiar with seeing this, okay, and familiar with writing it. Okay, we're going to have a look at a quick example. Okay, these uh, two figures here are congruent. This uh, quadrilateral ABCD and this quadrilateral GHFE. You can kind of see it. we've seen what transformations. Uh, we've had a rotation and you could also argue that it's been translated, you know, it's been moved over that way, okay? Uh, regardless, let's have a look at some of these things and how we'd say it. Well, what you might be asked, what uh, side of our new figure is congruent to side AB? So we go AB, side AB is equivalent to, well, let's have a look, it's the longest one here. What's the longest one here? Well, it's going to be HE. So AB is equivalent to HE, okay? Uh, we might be able to say, what about BC? B 
BC is equivalent to, it's the shortest one, find the shortest one here, GH. Okay, we can also do it with angles. The angle D, okay, remember this sign here means angle. The angle D is equivalent to, well, let's find on our shape, it's sort of part of this right angle looking thing. So angle D is equivalent to angle F. And angle E, which is our most acute angle there, is equivalent to, in our original at least anyway, angle A. Okay, so that's sort of some of the things that you're going to be required to do with this uh, small level of congruence and investigating congruence, okay? So thanks for watching the video. Make sure you have a shot at some of the stuff before you arrive to class so you've got a lot of, uh, you've got plenty of questions to be able to, you know, ensure that you're on the right track, okay? Thank you.